morning and welcome to Lake of the Isles Lutheran Church on this, the Sunday that is known as Ascension Sunday. According to tradition within the church, Jesus walked upon the earth for 40 days after his resurrection. And during that time, he appeared in many ways to his disciples. On that 40th day, which is traditionally marked on the Thursday of this week, it was the day that Jesus was lifted up and was carried unto his eternal home together to be again with his Father. And so we celebrate this day in our worship service, a day that is known as Christ's Ascension. We begin, as we have throughout this Easter season, with a time of remembrance of baptism. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. As many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. On the first day of the week at early dawn, the women went to the tomb taking spices which they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel, and as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise.
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your only Son was taken into the heavens, and in your presence intercedes for us. Receive us in our prayers for all the world, and in the end, bring everything into your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and the Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. How are you? I hope you're doing well. Um, today is the last Sunday of the Easter season. That is just hard to believe that seven weeks ago I said we're starting the Easter season and now here we are on the last Sunday of the season. Next week we get to start a new season, but we'll talk about that next week. So, so during the season we heard a lot of stories about Jesus um, after he died and rose from the dead and when he appeared to the disciples and other people. Uh, talking to them and teaching them and reassuring them and all of those things. So that's part of today's story, too. In today's story, Jesus is talking to the disciples what will end up being the last time, even though they don't really know that it's the last time. But he's making sure that they understand what happened to Jesus, that he died and he rose again and the importance of, of that happening. And he also wanted to make sure that he understood everything that he taught them. All those things like loving others, loving God, um, doing good things, being kind, helping others, sharing. All those important things that you guys have learned as well. Jesus was going to return to his Father in heaven, and he needed them to go to work for him. And he would send the Holy Spirit to help them do that work and be with them. So Jesus blesses them, and then he ascends into heaven. And ascend means to go up, and that's exactly what he did. He went into heaven. And then the disciples were met by two men in white robes who showed up and said, Jesus went up to heaven and not to worry that one day he will be back. And even though you can't see Jesus, he will always be with you, always and forever. So the disciples prayed and they praised God. And that is our story. Now, you'll notice that Jesus wasn't expecting the disciples to just sit back, do nothing, and wait for him. No, he said it's time to go to work. And this story is not only for the disciples, but it's for us too, 2,000 years later. Jesus has work for us to do also. We can learn the same things that the disciples learned by reading them in our Bibles. And we can practice the same things that Jesus taught the disciples also. We can love with God's love. We can help others with God's help. And we can teach others what we've learned about God. Those are all things that we can do, even now. So not only do we get to learn to be God's helpers, we get to be God's helpers. And that's pretty exciting. Now, God was pretty smart. God knew that he needed workers everywhere. He needed everyone to help out as much as they can. So he created us all with our unique talents and abilities and things that we can do. And what God wants is for us to not keep that to ourselves, but to share that with others. Use that as a tool to help others and to teach others about God's message to all of us. So we can all work together to spread God's love all over the world. And I think that's pretty cool. So this week, I have a task for you. I want you to decide what can you do this week to be a helper for God? How can you show love to someone? Or how can you help another person? Or how can you share with someone something that you learned about God? Choose one of them, two of them, or all of them. But see what you can do this week to share God's love. So I have one more thing for you, kind of fun. So today is called Ascension Sunday because we hear the story when Jesus ascends into heaven. And every year here at Lake of the Isles, we go outside and we have these eco-friendly, 100% biodegradable dove balloons that we release into the air and it reminds us of the story. So we are going to go outside really quick. And there are a few friends that are waiting outside that I think you might recognize and be excited to see too. So with that... I am going to say, 
see you next week, but we're gonna go outside first. So, see you later. Bye bye. One, two, three. is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ.
assurance in Christ's grace and peace to you. From God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Spring is normally a time for great endings and new beginnings. It's a time for grand farewells and the initial strides of graduating students stepping out along the unknown journeys ahead. Yes, normally, spring is a time for studying the patterns of parents and their youth and the coming of age. It's a time of blood, sweat, and tears, and it's not always the young and men and women who are anxious fretting about tomorrow's final exam, what will it bring? Parents who once laughed with their sons and daughters have begun to discover a lump in their throat as they wonder, are these kids ever leaving? Parents may grow misty-eyed with the thought that a beloved child will no longer be a part of their home. But this year, they're disheartened that they are still in the house at 11 o'clock in the morning. As for their sons and daughters, the graduates of 2020, this normally would be a time of unbridled optimism, a time of great endings that make great beginnings. Unfortunately, that was not what was in store this spring. The great endings and new beginnings of our graduates were suddenly rewritten in that second week of March. As we have all discovered this year, there's so much that is still unknown and so little that can be taken for granted. In the blink of an eye, the coronavirus erupted into a global pandemic and interrupted our lives. But for the graduating classes of 2020 across this country, this pandemic came with little to no chance of having a normal ending to their senior year. Events which seem so common, so 2019, prom, late night parties with friends, graduation ceremonies and open houses disappeared. Over and over again, these graduates are being told that the springtime should not be regarded as their defining hour, but it certainly will color their perspective of the future. If there is any consolation, dear graduates, it is this. Jesus' own disciples experienced a disruptive springtime as well. On that first ascension day long ago, when Jesus returned to his Father's heavenly home, the disciples were preparing for their own great endings and new beginnings. For three years, they had been studying with Jesus. They had been rehearsing for that day that they would be sent forth to do the work of the kingdom. They, too, were dreaming dreams, and like you, they were crushed when their master, Jesus, was crucified on that long Good Friday even after his resurrection on, from the dead on Easter Sunday, his disciples wandered with him, somewhat shell-shocked, for another 40 days. For the very last hour, Jesus struggled to offer assurance to his disciples. And yet, at that last moment, they continued to wonder. Yes, they continued to be there. And then, like you, the disciples were told to stay home, stay here in the city, until you have been clothed from on high. Jesus, however, also offered three practical words of advice to his disciples, which are just as fitting for the class of 2020 as they were for the graduating class of disciples 2,000 years ago. It is practical advice for each one of us, for those preparing to leave home, to the graduates who are making plans for a new beginning, and for all of us who are experiencing the changes in our lives and careers. I might even add it is fitting counsel for anxious pastors, wondering when and how we should move on. The three words that Jesus offered are, be positive, be prepared, and be patient. Let's consider Jesus' first word of practical advice, be positive. This spring we have all learned some things about ourselves, 
and some things not so positive and somewhat negative, and they don't simply go away. It said, you can tell a lot about a person by how they handle slow internet and tangled Christmas lights. Before he was lifted up, Jesus said to his disciples, you are witnesses of these things. You may have dreams for your life. Hopefully these dreams will serve you well, but part of God's dream for you is that your life will be a positive living witness of his in this world. Mind you, there will be many who will tell you to abandon the Christian faith of your youth. You will meet others who will say that the Christian faith is nothing more than a set of rules to ruin a perfectly good time. That may, that may tempt you to look upon the church and your faith as simply excess baggage, ready to let, be left behind. I hope instead that you will be like the American humorist and author Mark Twain, who once wrote, when I was 17 years old, my father was the most ignorant man in the world. But when I turned 22 years, I was surprised to discover how much he had learned in five years. Dear graduates, be discerning with your faith. As you move on and start again somewhere new, search for that positive core value that's within you. Those positive core values of the Christian faith so that you may be a living and vital witness of God's dream for you and the world. Hold to your ideals. Have that dear dream. Be positive and go for it. Second, Jesus' word of practical advice was simply be prepared. As a former Boy Scout, I lived by this model. I learned as well, proper preparation prevents poor performance. Before Jesus was lifted up, he said to his disciples that repentance and forgiveness of sin are to be proclaimed to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. It's interesting that Jesus didn't command his disciples to go to the ends of the earth first. That was to be the final dream and destination. Instead, the disciples were told to begin using their time, their talents, preparing for the task in Jerusalem, in their own backyard. The disciples would certainly journey to the distant places, but Jesus' practical advice for the future is that preparation often begins now and is performed close to home. It is where we initiate new beginnings. In 1887, Thomas Alva Edison, the great American inventor, opened a new laboratory at West Orange, New Jersey. He called it his invention factory. In 1914, the laboratory burned to the ground. Edison took the loss calmly. All of our mistakes have been destroyed, he said. In a new factory, we can start our experiments with a clean slate. Perhaps more remarkably, he said, I am 67, but I'm not too old to make a fresh start. Dear graduates, no one can go back and make a brand new start at this ending. You certainly, certainly wouldn't want to go back to middle school and high school all over, over again just to get the right ending to your high school career. But anyone could start from now and make a brand new ending, a new beginning. So do the things now that will prepare you for that new future. And finally, be patient. Before he was lifted up, Jesus said to his disciples, And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised, so wait and stay here. As men and women always on the move, we are constantly being pushed and urged to act. No doubt in your life you too will have the encouragement to sprint, to catch your dreams. You will be invited to live and learn without sacrifice. Surprisingly, let me tell you, 
we learn more about ourselves in the empty time than when we are too busy to notice. Dear graduates, don't be afraid of Jesus' advice to be patient. Live with the assurance that if you live with God's dream, he will empower you with his Holy Spirit. A new and greater dream will be offered to you. The disciples waiting in Jerusalem could have never imagined the adventures and the challenges that they would counter as they began doing the work of the kingdom. And it all began as they waited patiently in their own backyard and as they were and never would be disappointed again. Yes, like Jesus' own disciples, class of 22, you have been told to stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This may not be the graduation celebration you were expecting, but this I can tell you with confidence. God has great things waiting for you. So be positive. Be prepared. And be patient. God has a dream yet to be revealed to you, for you and you alone, and for your life. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
virtual reality we are now bringing together again our confirmation classes they prepare to celebrate the wonder of graduation in this year 2020. And so we turn to our first of our graduates, Jurgen. Jurgen, you have had one of the most interesting educational journeys from the United States to India and back again. And now we're wondering what school are you graduating from this spring? Edison High School. And where will you be going in the fall, hopefully? Uh, Luther College. Congratulations, following in the footsteps, the big footsteps of your parents. Now I'd like to invite your parents, uh, Lars and Shandi, to come forward to say a few words to you. Great, Jorgen, just want to tell you how much we love you and how proud we are of you. And we wish you all the very best as you transition from high school to college and all that you have ahead of you. Um, it's such a bright future. We're so lucky to have you as our son. Mom and Dad, uh, I want to thank you for being so there for me in my life and helping me through my life and uh, loving me so much and trying so hard from, to make me succeed and life as a whole. Thank you. And so now I'd like you to take the blanket that uh, Jurgen has chosen and wrap it around him. And it's a symbol of the love of this congregation and of course in the warm months it may not be the right one but for now it is to be reminded of the great love of this congregation and of family for Jordan. And now our, our second graduate is Stephanie Aman. When she was confirmed here this was her confirmation verse. But as for you continue in what you have learned and firmly believe knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for the salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy 14 through 15. Stephanie, congratulations. What school are you graduating from this spring? Nova Classical Academy. Congratulations. And where are you going to be going, hopefully in the fall? St. Olaf. St. Olaf. This is good to hear, the first time I've heard this news. Congratulations. As this journey ends, now I'd like to invite your family to say a few words of encouragement and love to you as they prepare you for your graduation. Stephanie, it's been such a treasure to see you grow up over the years into a fine young lady of our household, and we are thrilled at what the future holds for you. Stephanie, we love you very much. You are a blessing and you will be very much missed when you go away for college. And now as a little symbol of both your, the love of your family and the love of this congregation, I'd like your mother to wrap this blanket around you to be reminded again of how much you are loved and wrapped in the love of those gathered here this day. Blessings to you, Stephanie, as you have been at the blessing to others. Thank you. And now our third graduate, and that is Kate Meckles. Please come forward. Kate, what school are you going to be graduating from now this spring? Uh, Washburn. Washburn in South Minneapolis. And where are you going to be going, hopefully, in the fall? <laughs> uh, College of St. Benedict. And is there any tie to that neighborhood for your family? Uh, my dad went to St. John's. Okay. Well, now, with that, I'd like to invite your family to come forward and to surround you. Congratulations, Kate. We, uh, we're so excited to see what happens with uh, your new time up at St. Ben's, and um, we're looking forward to what you do. Thank Anybody you. else want to say anything? <laughs> Embarrassing for everybody. Now, I want to embarrass you, and that is for you to say how much you love your family and thank them for the support throughout these years. Uh, thank you for helping me throughout uh, high school and my life and supporting me. And, and to your mother too. And my mom and my brothers. <laughs> and now I'd like to invite you to place this blanket around Kate's shoulders. It's a reminder and a symbol of 
the great love and affection of this congregation towards you and also the great love of your family. Thank you. May you continue to be a blessing to others. To Jordan, to Stephanie, and to Katie, we thank you for the many ways that you have blessed this congregation. In serving on the church council and serving as Sunday school teachers, you have all truly been a blessing to this congregation. And we pray now that you would be a blessing to this world as you go forth as graduates of 2020. Let us pray. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Throughout this Easter season, we are grateful for the many ways in which you have continued to support this congregation and its ministry. And so as we present our offering, we invite you to meditate again upon your gifts that do God's work here in this place. We invite you to send your gifts to the church or to use the option online for giving. We continue now with the offering.
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, all creation sings praise to you. You delight in the oceans and the mountains are your throne. Teach us humility and respect for our home. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Sovereign God, you rule the heavens, the earth, and time itself. Make this a time of justice, peace, and solidarity among the nations and the peoples, so that oppression and violence rule no more. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Tender God, we wait with hope for your presence to heal us, bless us, restore us, and give us peace. You know all the names of those suffering for whom we pray this day. Deb Benson, Gary Olson, Sam Patterson, Jim Peterson, Sam Brown, Bruce Payne, Mike Payne, Lynn Williamson, Haluza Ramos, the family of Steve Hahn, Mary McCarthy, Trevor Daniel, and Joel Rosen. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Gentle God, guide us as we seek wisdom. We pray for teachers, professors, theologians, daycare workers, and all those charged with teaching the young and old. Give them endurance and persistence in their valuable work. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. God, our peace and our strength. We pray for our nation and the world as we face new uncertainties around the coronavirus. Protect the most vulnerable among us, especially all who are currently sick or in isolation. Grant wisdom, patience, and clarity to healthcare workers, especially those as they are working and caring for others that puts them at themselves to risk. Guide us as we consider how best to prepare and respond in our families, congregations, workplaces, and communities. Give us courage to face these days, not with fear, but with compassion, concern, and acts of service, trusting that you abide with us always, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Into your hands, God of abundant grace, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Together we pray the prayer your Son, our Savior, first taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We welcome you again to our worship service here at Lake of the Odds Lutheran Church. Pray that this has been a time, this memorial weekend, where we're reflecting on the sacrifice of others. To think of our own sacrifice in this time and to be aware of men and women throughout the years and ages who have continued to serve their nation and have indeed given their life on the altar of freedom. The announcements for this week are uh, new, more numerous than in past weeks. One is that we invite you next week, as you have heard during our Sunday School lesson, that it is going to be Pentecost. And on the you know, website from Family Resources, a little piece that is a flame, the perfect symbol for next week's Pentecost story. And so we invite you to uh, print these out for yourself, for your children, for anyone, and to color them, and then to take a picture of them and send them to Miss Diane here at the church because they are going to be used as part of a collage in next week's worship service. Next week we are also going to try something new and that is a Zoom coffee hour immediately following the worship service. And so again, we invite you to send your email address to us so we can uh, send that and we will play with the idea of how to break you up in the middle of a conversation and talk to somebody else. What a great way to do it. Uh, this week is also the final week of Growlers and Theology. Uh, please note that. And on Wednesday uh, morning will be our weekly Bible study. During the time of early Lent, we began a fundraiser of sorts, uh, which would be given to Lutheran World Relief. And this week we are going to be purchasing the final items that will be going in those packages and so we invite you even now to uh, let the church know to send your gift so that we may send the full accompaniment of these packages to Lutheran World Relief. Those are the announcements to state. We indeed wish our best wishes and congratulations to our graduates this year. We know it is a different year, but we are still proud of your great achievement. Go in peace, live in love as Christ loved us. Thanks be to God.